Today on Jick Labs, we're diving a little bit deeper into the pivot table. Let's get started. Now that you have Excel open and ready to go, you're going to see where exactly where we were last week where we left off with our pivot tables. So what we want to look at this week, the first topic we want to cover is adding more data to your pivot table, which sounds easy, right? We made our pivot table from A2 to G83. But as you can see, we have some more data that's been added to our pivot table. So, but the numbers aren't changing. Why is that? Well, because we, when we made this pivot table, we made it between A2 and G83, but now we have up to G87. So obviously the data outside of that isn't going to be reported. So there's two ways that you can go about making sure that you have all your data. So the first things first is go back to your pivot table, click inside your pivot table, and on your home ribbon, go to pivot table analyze. And here we are, we're gonna see change source data. We're gonna click on that guy. It's gonna bring up a new menu for us. Change pivot table data and here we go. Well, as we can see, that's our original data, but now it's G87 and we're gonna click OK. It takes us back to our pivot table. As you can see, we jumped from 81 to 85 and now we're counting for those things and the numbers have updated. Now let's say those numbers did not update. How do you update your pivot table? So let's come in here real quick. We know this is correct. Let's go to our original data and change this last sale to $2,000. All right, let's make it a very huge number that we should see. Let's say it's $20,000. And we come into the pivot table again. Well, the numbers haven't updated. Well, if you right click in the body of your pivot table, and select refresh, the numbers will update. As you can see, Larry jumped 20,000 and the total down below jumped. If we come back over here and change this back to, you know, 1250, and you go back, the numbers are not the same again. The pivot table doesn't automatically refresh every time you change data, so you have to right click and select refresh, and there you go. So I mentioned that there was two ways to make sure that you always include all of your data in a pivot table. Well, as you know, this current pivot table is A2 to G87. Well, what if we just know we're gonna be having data add and add and add? Well, every time new sales data gets added, we're gonna have to update that pivot table's data source. Well, problem right now is the way our data is on this sheet we have a title to our page. So our next option will not work with a title. You need your column headers in the first row. So let's go ahead and delete this guy. Now our headers are in the first row. We're gonna go back to our pivot table and we're gonna to go to pivot table analyze. We're gonna change the data source. That brings up that new window for us. And what we're gonna do in here is we're not gonna go A1 and as you can see, it automatically updated it for us to A1 because we deleted that row. Another option you could do is you could come in and sort of say, gee, you know, all you want to do. Well, that's, I don't want to do that. So we're going to come in here and say between A and G and hit OK. As you can see, nothing has changed. We'll refresh it just to be safe. So the data has changed. But you see now we have a blank because now what we're doing is we are looking in all of these columns as far as we can see. So there's a lot of blank data here. So how do I get rid of that? Let's go back to our pivot table, just like we showed you. You can select the auto filter on the row label and just uncheck blank. And there you go. Now your data is a lot cleaner. So that's two ways that you can change your data source as well as make sure your pivot table is refreshed with all the most up-to-date data. Let's add in some more fields. Let's add in the date field because not only do I wanna see the sum of everyone's sales, I also wanna see it on a month-by-month -month basis. So let's look back at our original data. We have invoice number date. Well, obviously date is gonna be the field that we wanna select 
and we're going to come in here and look for the date. I realize that our set of data for this example is very small, but sometimes you could have many, many, many columns that you have to scroll and scroll and scroll for, which isn't a lot of fun. What you can do is come in here and search. We're looking for date. Oh, there we go. It automatically populates it to the rows. And now we can see Alice's, Jack's, Larry's, everyone's sales. The grand total is still the same. And we can go and look at, let's say, Alice's for February. We click on that and we can see each date of which she had a sale. The 1st of February, she had two. But let's say we don't wanna see all of this data. I wanna be able to see it all summarized. Well, if we right click on Alice, we can say expand or collapse, and we wanna collapse the entire field. Likely so, we can right click on Alice and say expand the entire field, and it would be expanded for us. So let's just say right now, we don't like this count of sales amount. It just doesn't look good. So we're gonna remove that guy. So to clear our search, we'll just hit this X on the right hand side. We're going to down drop on count of sales. We're gonna remove that field. And as you can see, now we still have Alice's sales by month and day. Now let's just say we didn't wanna dive down into days, but when we checked date, it is a single field in our report. But now we have months and dates, but we can remove date and just have the months, and now the months are not expandable. The same is true with every salesperson. But we wanna do add back in the invoice count. So invoice number is to me is a better field than the sum of sales. So let's check that guy. It's also giving us the sum of invoice numbers, which we don't wanna do. So in previous videos, we've changed that value. So we're gonna do that real quick, change it to count, and there we go. Thank you for joining us today as we further explored the pivot table. Today we showed you how to add and change your data source, refresh your pivot tables, as well as expand and collapse your pivot table as you get more and more information and build upon your table. Thank you all for watching and join us next week when we go a little bit deeper onto more subjects into the pivot table. Again, the best way to get used to them is to practice. The comments down below, we will have the link to our share drive where you can build upon our data to make your pivot tables. Thank you all again, and we'll see you all next week.